I moved in with my daughter Diana to start a fresh chapter of my life after my divorce from Albert was confirmed. After this changeover for around eight months, something unexpected happened. I was having some downtime with Diana at home on one of my days off when I got a strange call from my mom. She told me that without warning, Albert and his mother had come up at my parents' house. I hastily got dressed and rushed over to my parents' house, feeling both curious and alarmed. I arrived to find Albert and his mother sitting on the living room sofa, seemingly anticipating my arrival. I questioned, perplexed by their presence, why are you here in my parents' house? Albert surprised me with his response. I want you to return the money you owe me, he commanded. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Judy, a 38-year-old employee in an office. After 10 years of marriage, Albert and I had a daughter named Diana, who is currently enrolled in the eighth grade. His kind, gregarious, and upbeat personality drew us in right away on our blind date. We went from being high school sweethearts to life partners, and after a year of dating, he proposed. My close-knit circle of high school pals attended our happy wedding. We were all intricately entwined in one another's life, commemorating significant occasions in tandem. Eventually, every friend in this close-knit group found a spouse and tied the knot, forming a close-knit group of married people. Our family was joyful, and I always thought that our house would be a haven of love and support. Our close-knit circle of friends changed from carefree singles to married adults as we grew older. I declared my pregnancy shortly after, and it appeared that my pals did the same. We quickly became a group of mothers who shared the pleasures and difficulties of becoming parents with one another. We seemed to be riding the waves of life together, and I had no doubt that our friendship would endure forever. I cherished my dual roles as both a wife and a mother, and I was equally passionate about my career. After graduating from college, I secured a position in the planning and development department of a large corporation. My days were packed, and the work was demanding yet fulfilling. Each day brought new lessons and challenges. One of my friends, a stay-at-home mom, once playfully teased me, saying, You're a workaholic, Judy, but you also manage to maintain a wonderful family life. It's almost as if you're living two lives. She admired my strength, though I often joked that I wished I had the boundless energy typical of a robust man. Both Albert and Diana play pivotal roles in helping me decompress after long days at the office. When I arrived home, I was greeted by Diana's bride. Oh, mommy, welcome home. Her youthful enthusiasm and warm hugs melted away the day's fatigue. Albert had transitioned to part-time work at a local cafe after Diana was born, allowing him to take on the primary responsibilities of picking her up from school and preparing dinner. This arrangement not only supported my career, but also ensured that I returned home to a freshly cooked meal, which was a tremendous relief. Albert's thoughtful cooking allowed me to unwind and feel rejuvenated. Evenings at home were a cherished ritual. Diana and I would often take baths together, chatting about our days and sharing little stories. This simple, everyday interaction was a source of immense joy and fulfillment. My life was a beautiful balance of professional achievements and home life bliss, all made possible by the unwavering support and kindness of Albert and Diana. Their support not only bolstered my energy, but also deepened my dedication and passion for my work. Together, we had crafted a life that was as rewarding as it was busy, proving that with the right support, one could indeed have it all. As my career progressed and I began to achieve significant results, I was rewarded with a promotion. With this new position came increased responsibilities, leading me to work more overtime and often arrive home quite late. By this time, Diana had grown older and had a better grasp of the demands of my job, which allowed her to manage more on her own. 
Meanwhile, Albert also increased his hours at the cafe, further immersing himself in the world of coffee. Lately, I have taken to exploring various coffee shops, indulging in their unique coffee beans. Even today, I have brought home some beans along with cakes from a new bakery I discovered. I suggested we enjoy them together with coffee, excited to share this with Albert, who had become quite passionate about roasting and experimenting with different types of beans at his job. This made the coffee he brewed at home exceptionally good. Albert and Diana were both very supportive of my dedication to my career. But despite their understanding, I started to notice a gradual distancing within our family. The first sign that something was amiss came when Diana approached me with a concern. What's up? You wanted to talk about something? I asked her. The other day, when I went to see a movie with friends, I saw Dad with another woman. She revealed her voice tinged with uncertainty. I was taken aback, shocked by her words. Diana continued, they weren't holding hands or anything, but they seemed quite close. Lately, I've noticed Dad talking a lot on the phone before you get home. Sometimes he's so engrossed that he doesn't listen to me. He looks happy while he's on the phone. At first, I thought he was texting or talking to you. But after seeing him with that woman, I'm starting to wonder if he was talking to her instead. As she spoke, Diana's expression was filled with sadness. Being in middle school, she was acutely aware and sensitive to such matters, and it was clear she felt troubled by this observation. I was equally stunned. The thought that Albert, who I believed always prioritized Diana, might be involved with someone else was heartbreaking. This revelation required a careful and sensitive approach, as our family's unity was at stake. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I didn't realize we were making you feel this way. I've been too focused on work, haven't I? I said, feeling a twinge of guilt as I looked at Diana. No, it's okay that you work hard, Mom. Don't feel bad about that, Diana reassured me, her maturity at that moment beyond her years. I was touched by her understanding and compassion. Thank you, Diana, I replied, my heart heavy. I'll talk to your dad about this. If it turns out he's having an affair, I think I'll have to consider a divorce. Is that okay with you? She nodded solemnly. I don't like the idea of dad having an affair. Just knowing that and still being with him would make me feel bad. Seeing Diana so distressed made me realize just how much I had overlooked our family's needs. Determined to address this head on, especially since Diana had bravely brought it up, I decided to hire a private investigator to delve into Albert's activities. The findings were as shocking as they were conclusive. Albert was indeed having an affair, just as Diana suspected, and there was photographic evidence to prove it. What stunned me most was the identity of his affair partner. Tiffany, one of my high school classmates and a fellow member of our mom's group, I was more hurt by this betrayal from a trusted friend than by Albert's infidelity. Tiffany, a stay-at-home mom and supposedly a loyal friend in our group, had her young child, yet she was involved with Albert, neglecting her family commitments. Upon seeing the evidence, I was overwhelmed with emotion. Alone in my room, I was grateful that Diana hadn't walked in on me during this moment. The photos would have only added to her distress. I wasn't ready to confront Albert yet, nor could I let Diana see these disturbing images. I took a few deep breaths to compose myself. Shortly after, another friend from the mom's group mentioned she had changed jobs, which sparked an idea. I suggested we all get together, seeing it as a perfect opportunity to observe Tiffany without revealing that I knew about the affair. The gathering was set for two weeks later. In the meantime, I quietly contacted a lawyer and began preparing for a potential divorce, fortifying myself for the challenges ahead. I took a moment to gently inform Diana about what I had uncovered and the inevitable decision that her dad and I would be getting a divorce. 
together, we spend our free time searching for a new apartment, trying to find a space that would signify a fresh start for us both. As the day of the planned get-together approached, I felt a mixture of anticipation and dread. When the day finally arrived, I engaged in casual conversation with my friends, starting with asking about one friend's new job before we all shared updates on our lives. Tiffany seemed oblivious to the fact that I knew her secret. During the conversation, she lamented her routine life, saying, I'm just a housewife stuck in the same routine. Unlike all of you who have careers, you don't have to work because your husband supports you. Another friend pointed out, I do appreciate my husband. Tiffany replied, but sometimes I feel a little bored. It was then that I decided it was time to address the elephant in the room. So is that why you're having an affair with other people's husbands? I asked, turning directly to Tiffany. The room fell silent, and the casual ambience quickly shifted to tension. Ah, Judy, what do you mean by that? Tiffany stammered, her face draining of color. It seems that Tiffany is having an affair with my husband, Albert, I declared plainly. What? No way. You must be joking. Another friend interjected, trying to defend Tiffany, taking advantage of the disbelief. Tiffany tried to deflect. That's right, Judy. What are you talking about? All of a. Sudden, you must have confused me with someone else. Oh, really? I countered, my voice steady. Then why don't you all take a look at this? I reached into my bag, pulled out the photos, and spread them out on the table for everyone to see. The room erupted into gasps of disbelief. Oh my gosh. They gasped, turning to Tiffany for explanations. Tiffany, clearly caught off guard and unable to deny the evidence before her, covered her mouth with her hand. I'm sorry, she began, her voice trembling. I happened to walk into the cafe where your husband works. I didn't know he worked there initially, but then I started going there regularly. My husband provides for me, but he's been neglecting me since we got married. I was feeling lonely, Tiffany continued, tears starting to form in her eyes. Despite her emotional response and attempts to justify her actions, the betrayal cut deep. An affair, particularly with a friend's husband, was a breach of trust that was hard to overlook. Her reasons, while they might explain her actions, didn't excuse them. The revelation was painful but necessary, as it confirmed the reality I had begun to suspect and reshaped the dynamics of our friendship and personal lives. Throughout the confrontation, I maintained my composure, unaffected by Tiffany's tears. I'm sorry to everyone else here, but Tiffany, I need to let you know that I will be seeking a lemony from you, I announced firmly. I had also taken a formal step earlier that day. I sent a certified letter to your mailbox. Today, your husband should have already seen it. Tiffany's face fell as she absorbed the weight of the situation. Oh no, she murmured, a mix of worry and disbelief in her voice. How could he do something so terrible? She asked, still reeling from the shock. It's far worse to have an affair with a friend's husband, especially when you're married and have a child. I replied, steady and resolute, you need to face the consequences and make amends for your actions. Visibly shaken, Tiffany nodded her acknowledgement. One of my friends chimed in, we really can't trust you anymore, Tiffany. With that, we left the restaurant, leaving Tiffany to grapple with the fallout. Once I dealt with Tiffany, it was time to confront Albert. I was fairly certain that Tiffany had already informed him about what had transpired. When I arrived home, Albert was waiting at the door, his expression panicked. What have you done? I just got a call from Tiffany. Are you making our affair public? How could you be so terrible? You acted like a good husband, but you were cheating on me. And no, it's not just about exposing Tiff. How could you do that to her family? I retorted, it's ridiculous. 
I continued, my tone firm, it seems people who have affairs think alike. You believe that as long as the other person doesn't find out, it's not a big deal. But what you did was wrong, and it all needs to be revealed as part of your punishment. That's why I'm going to divorce you and seek a limony and child support. Faced with clear evidence of the affair, Albert could not deny the truth. He agreed to the divorce, though he was initially hesitant about the financial implications. Once I hired a strong lawyer and made it clear I was prepared to take the case to court if necessary, he finally consented to the financial arrangements. Following the divorce, Albert sold the house we had lived in and moved to a new apartment. I pursued and received alimony from both Albert and Tiffany, totaling $50,000 from each. Additionally, I secured child support from Albert. Once everything was settled, Diana and I began our new life together. Though the ordeal was deeply traumatic for me, the experience, while painful, marked the start of a new chapter where we could seek peace and rebuild our lives. Over time, the emotional wounds from my divorce began to heal. However, about eight months later, I faced a new challenge. While I was enjoying a relaxed day at home with Diana, my peace was disrupted by an urgent call from my mother. She informed me that my ex-husband Albert and his mother had unexpectedly shown up at my parents' house and had forced their way inside without permission. My father was not home at the time, so my concerned mother quickly rang me up. I hurriedly prepared myself and went over to my parents' house. Upon arriving, I found Albert and his mother sitting nonchalantly on the living room sofa as if they belonged there. Confused and a bit alarmed, I asked, what are you both doing here at my parents' house? All of a sudden, Albert's response was shocking. He demanded, I want you to give me back the money you owe me. Huh, I never borrowed any money from you, I replied, perplexed. He retorted, I paid $225,000 for our wedding. Remember, you were in charge of the wedding, so that money was lent to you. Now that we're divorced, you're claiming it was all a fraud. Honestly, I could sue you for marriage fraud, but for now, all I want is that $25,000 back as a settlement. This unreasonable request took me aback. His mother also chimed in, insisting that I pay him as soon as possible. It became clear that Albert was struggling financially, which might have been driving his irrational demands. He had taken a full-time job at the cafe where he used to work part-time, but the pay was modest. Firmly, I reminded him, we both were equally involved in the wedding, and I paid more of our living expenses than you did. The $25,000 is just a small part of what I contributed. Don't bother me with such unreasonable demands. As the tension escalated, they refused to leave. Just then, my father arrived, having been alerted by my mother. What are you guys doing here? He demanded sternly. Albert repeated his claims to my father, who, although usually calm, was visibly furious and shocked by Albert's audacious demands. It's your fault for having an affair in the first place. If you're going to make such outrageous demands, get out of here, my father asserted, trying to expel them from the house. In a desperate turn, Albert fell to his knees and begged, Please, Judy, lend me money. Not only are you demanding a lemony, but Tiffany's husband is also after me, and I can't afford it. Even $6,000 would help. It was disheartening to see him in such a state begging for money. However, I responded firmly, No, I can't do that. Go home. The situation highlighted the deep desperation Albert was experiencing, but also reaffirmed my resolve to maintain boundaries and protect my family's peace. As the situation with my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law escalated, my father intervened, suggesting he'd handle it. Fine, I'll get the money. Just wait here, he said calmly and walked to another room. 
Curious, I followed him. With a mischievous grin, he said, well, I have plenty of money. Since we have it, why not give it to them? He opened the closet and pulled out some cash, creating a sense of suspense. I wondered how this would play out, mused silently. My father then put the bills into an envelope and handed it to Albert. With faces lit up with satisfaction, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law left with the envelope, thinking their plan had worked. As soon as they stepped out, I locked the door behind them and made a quick call to the police. It didn't take long for Albert and his mother to realize the money was fake. They rushed back, pounding on our door in anger. Hey, what's going on? This is Monopoly money. I don't want this fake cash. Albert shouted, his voice thick with fury. I couldn't help but laugh as I responded through the door. Since we have so much of it, I thought I'd share it with you. Albert's frustration peaked, and he began banging even harder, now kicking the door with his feet. Their actions only escalated the situation further. As Albert and his mother wreaked havoc on our door, the police arrived and caught them in the act. The scene drew the attention of the neighbors, many of whom witnessed their arrest. In the end, not only did Albert not get any money, but he was also fined for the disturbance and had to cover the damage to our front door. Ironically, one of the bystanders was a regular at the cafe where Albert worked, and word of his antics spread quickly. As a result, Albert lost his job and found himself struggling to find new work. He had to move back in with his parents, and his in-laws ended up covering his alimony and child support payments. To safeguard my family further, I filed a restraining order against my former in-laws, ensuring that any future incidents would lead to an immediate police response. Now life is more peaceful and fulfilling. I'm devoted to working hard and relishing the time watching my daughter Diana grow up.